guess. We're not that smart. We've been kind of re reiterating this message over and over again, year after year. Let the market tell you what's going to happen next. And not only did the Qs reclaim 364, they got green on the day. And that's incredibly bullish. We saw a lot of big hammers uh, coming in on the daily. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, nightly update. Hope everybody had a good day. I've been kind of in a fog all day. Uh, last night, for some reason, I couldn't fall asleep and then I woke up early. I'm, I'm basically like on my third cup of coffee. I was like on two hours of sleep all day, just literally in a fog. The worst thing you can do, okay, the absolute worst thing you can do is try to formulate an opinion or have a, a really decisive mental edge when you're completing the fog. So I kind of decided just to sit today out uh, for the most part, just for the fact that if you're not 100%, um, whether you're sick under the, you know, uh, under the influence of alcohol, God forbid, as, you, as, you're, as you're drinking, uh, as you're working, uh, had a fight with your spouse, whatever the case may be, you need so much concentration and I'm still kind of in a fog. So I'm gonna try to go to bed today uh, a little bit early today and trying to fall asleep for the whole night. But again, the last thing you want to do is try to uh, navigate, especially uh, the financial markets when you're half asleep. And as you can see, I'm not exactly all there today. So anyway, guys, so let's talk about the market. Um, last week, the market did incredibly well. Uh, the mantra of the market has been literally buying dips on every single aspect. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, the market has done incredibly well. Again, if you turned around, um, you know, a year or so back and you said hey look we're gonna be in a global pandemic we are gonna shut down uh the universe global commerce will be halted to us to a snail uh and we're at all-time highs nobody would ever believe that because it just doesn't sound uh rational and we've been literally buying when we when to say we i mean the market participants have been buying uh dips in the market for this whole time it's it, we've been on this magical carpet ride and the one thing the market doesn't like is uncertainty so when you woke up this morning, and, and again, my, my initial game plan today was pretty, I had so many long setups today. Uh, you know, we talked about them some on the video with Apple uh, and Facebook and stuff like that, but uh, markets don't like uncertainty. And you saw over the weekend news break very, very quickly how the Taliban has rised up again, right? And you started seeing these headlines slowly but surely come in or actually uh, fast and furious come in uh, that they're, you know, they've seized the presidential palace that, you know, just everything is just really going to hell in a handbasket very, very quickly. And the overnight cash session, the futures started reflecting that. And the futures were lower and we, we, we had nothing dramatic, but they were lower. And slowly but surely throughout the overnight and into this morning, you started hearing more and more things. And there was a, a, a press conference uh, in, in the Rose Garden by Biden to kind of give us the details and nobody knew what was going on. We, you know, the, we, you know, if this was, you know, 20 years ago, if you guys remember old enough to remember this, George W. Bush, when the whole first shock and awe, I mean, they were selling, sending cruise missiles by the time this dude was, 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 uh, you know, giving, giving his speech of what was going to happen next. It was shock and awe. You know, this was like, get Saddam and all that stuff. So nobody knew what to expect. And there was a lot of speculation, uh, but the market didn't like the news. They didn't like the uncertainty. They didn't like uh, the unknown of what was gonna happen next. And the queues started really getting aggressive towards the morning. And the one thing we kept on reiterating the point was, remember all bad news, including the pandemic was kind of embraced, like embraced and brushed to the side. And we started talking about this uh, rising area here, this. Three, uh, 364 level. And if you go through my Twitter account, like th th all morning, you kind of see the close today was going to be super important. That line in the sand, 364, was going to be uh, a really good idea of what was going to happen next. You sprinkle in a little bit of Delta, you know, Delta COVID and the uncertainty, what was going on um, with Afghanistan. And, you know, it wasn't going to be a smooth ride. And that was, uh, and that was pretty obvious. But in true nature of the market, um, you know, you saw a really good, you know, showdown at the 364 corral and the queues. 
And that was the battleground. They fought and they fought and they fought and they fought. And the true fashion of the market, just like we've seen now for years and years and years, the bulls uh, got the upper hand. They reclaimed this 364 level. They held serve. And we got this really aggressive rally into the close. And not only that, we finally got some clarity of what was going to happen uh, with our stance, right? Whether you were for it or against it, um, we finally got a little bit of, of sense of what was happening. Biden came out and basically said, hey, listen, if, uh, you know, if their own government, right, if the own uh, Afghan army wasn't going to fight this battle, he basically said, look, it's not our battle to fight either. And they were going to basically pull out. He basically said, look, this is not our fight. And the markets, you know, they started getting, you know, they started getting a, a, an attraction of, well, maybe this is one less thing we have to worry about. And again, you, there's a whole conversation, political conversation that I'm, I'm not have any interest in having. OK, uh, any interest of in having you can have your own opinions. But from the from the financial markets point of view, it's almost like the financial markets exhaled, kind of knowing what was going to happen next instead of vague uh, and, um, you know, vague type of commentary or some sort of benign commentary that was literally going to have no closure of one way or another. And the markets from that, you know, from that press conference on just kind of rallied into the close. And basically a lot of names that were strong into Friday's session that we liked going into today's session, they did really, really well at the close and kind of spilling over it tomorrow. Now, is this a scenario that everything looks great for tomorrow? No, it doesn't. Because again, with this sell-off, we did see a lot of names kind of go on the water and, and stand there. But that's kind of what we discussed on the weekend video anyway. So it wasn't like one of those blanket things that everything was going to rally. We didn't expect everything to rally uh, today to begin with without all this news uh, of the Taliban. Again, nobody knows what ramification this is going to be a year from now, a week from now, a month from now, but from the day-to-day -day aspect, strictly from the trading aspect, at least the market uh, pretty much said, hey, we're, we're fine with this. You know, we're fine with this news. Um, you know, business as usual, the bulls came storming back. And this is, again, folks, why we say every single day, don't guess, okay? Do not have an opinion because, again, what we saw this morning was nonstop put buying because there was just no, you know, no really good stance of what was going to happen, you know, with this whole Afghan uh, situation. So there's a lot of call buying, a lot of put buying, and people are all over the place. That's it. This is the market. It's going to 10% correction, this, that, the third. And that didn't happen. And that's the most important message here, guys. Don't guess, okay? Uh, over, and we talked about this in nonstop, over 364 on a close on the Qs would be bullish. Uh, below 64 would be bearish. Again, don't guess. We're not that smart. We've been kind of re reiterating this message over and over again, year after year. Let the market tell you what's going to happen next. And not only did the Qs reclaim 364, they got green on the day. And that's incredibly bullish. We saw a lot of big hammers uh, coming in on the daily, but nothing bigger than Amazon. Did you guys see the, the hammer that Amazon put in on the daily? You're talking about a 100-point reversal. And again, Amazon's been kind of dead money now for the last couple of weeks since it came out earnings. But hey, I'm not saying this thing's going to start filling in this gap here. But look at this hammer here. This is the most bullish thing uh, you could possibly see. If it could start reclaiming the last couple of days of channels, we could get a dead cat bounce into the you know 3350, maybe 3370 level. We'll definitely one to watch uh, for tomorrow. But names like Facebook that was strong uh, going into the session had a really strong close. Names like Apple that we discussed in kind of a nausea for the last you know several you know several several days or so. How important that 150 level really really took off into the close. Microsoft still strong uh, again off that 290 level from three days ago. So there's a lot of strength. Uh, there's a lot of names that kind of rested is still on the water. But again, if you believe in the bull thesis, if you believe in the idea that these tech stocks are going to lead the way, then you have to love what uh, Apple uh, did today. Uh, Apple needs to be bought on any dips tomorrow, uh, especially into rising support. You saw today uh, the, the September the September and October 155s, uh, 160 calls coming in. Google, talk about a stock that is a stone throws away from breaking out. I mean, look at this thing. Had awesome earnings. 
Uh, relaxed for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Three weeks in a row of distribution. The, remember, the longer distribution, the bigger the move. And this thing is literally, you know, if, this, if this confirms tomorrow, you can start its next leg up uh, into the 2820s level. So there's a lot of things that are setting up really, really well. Even a name like IBM, right? Look at IBM. IBM has been rejected four times uh, off this 50-day moving average. Hey, who knows? Maybe I, IBM reclaims this level and starts its way up. So right now on the surface, things are still uh, bullish. Uh, again, folks, and I, I say this all the time, the last thing you want to do is will your way into a trade, will your way into forecasting what's going to happen next. You see so many traders, just because the price action goes one way in the morning, they're all over the place. And they're like, well, that's it. This is the end of the market. I told you this is a 10, 20 percent you know, a correction. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. We don't know. Right? We're all idiots. We don't know. And to think you know what's going to happen next is crazy. So, for example, everybody thought this Tesla was going to break out on Friday, right? Not only did it not break out on Friday, you had news coming out uh, this morning about an a, 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 a investigation about, uh, I forgot what it was. It was an investigation about self driving. I mean, look at this movie. It had a $31 decline on, on Tesla and it got back below the 50 day moving average. So, nobody knows, guys. We're, we're trading based on data. A lot of the morning today, I was gathering data. We saw it was weak. We saw it was strong. And that's what we're trying to kind of reiterate every single day. Trade on technical analysis. Okay. Trade on data. Do not trade on opinion. Do not trade on emotion. And honestly, nobody has a crystal ball. So taking the idea of you know what's going to happen in the next few days is silly. Trade on what the market pays. Uh, very, very important to understand our opinions don't matter. Price action is the only thing that matters, and the 4 o'clock closing price is fair value. So going into tomorrow, yes, there's some names, tech names I definitely like. Uh, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Apple, Facebook, Facebook, Amazon, um, Google, I obviously like any week open on some of these names. I definitely like to see how the shorts, if they could get trapped into rising support. So those names, I'm definitely going to uh, capitalize. If we get another curveball at some point, we'll obviously reassess the situation and go from there. So let's talk about today's pivots. Again, not many names. Remember, I was 100% buy biased. Uh, going into uh, today's session. There were a couple of names that we discussed from the weekend update that I did like. I did like uh, Zoom. I did like the Peloton before Peloton uh, came out with that news about the recall, that they were they're going to do everything in their power to kind of fix the, the issue of the recall of the treadmills. Uh, so there was definitely names, some, some names on the short side, mostly on the long side, and the market kind of played out uh, on both sides. So let's talk about this. So uh, NTNX, a name that I liked above 38, never got anywhere close to, to that. Um, uh, let's see here. NVIDIA 20250, 203 needs to build. It literally traded the 20280s, uh, never confirmed this channel. Uh, Zoom, this is one of the, the, the ones on the downside that we did like. 352, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here was Zoom. We talked about this on the weekend video. Uh, it took out the 252 level, went right down all, all the way to 342 before it held bottom support. So, really, really nice move. Uh, on Zoom, uh, Apple again, and, and the most ironic part was Apple was like, you know, 148 and change pre market. So I was like, oh, listen, I, I'm not on, I don't think it's going to go today, but hey, just in case, I go, listen, set the alert to 150. No need to continue to put into the channel. If it doesn't confirm today, I'll put things back as it gets closer, yada, yada, yada. Not only did it confirm, it closed at the highs of the day. Here was Apple. Uh, took out the 150, closed right at the highs of the day. It's trading uh, a little bit higher uh, after hours. Again, a lot of op bullish option flow on the name, so I definitely like it for higher prices. Uh, NVAX, I liked coming into today. It got nowhere near, I mean, nowhere near the 360 level. Matter of fact, when, last time I saw it, it was down like 10, yada, yada, yada. It was down like 30, so again, never, never came close to that. Uh, ZI never confirmed 63. Uh, Victoria's Secret, so we talked about, never got close to 76. Uh, Dash got never close to 196. Facebook, here it is right here. Big strong move into the close. Uh, 3580, 36 on that second entry was perfect into the close. And here was uh, Facebook trading all the way up to the 37 level. I still like it for higher prices. Uh, if the market holds serve, as you can see, the, sh the leaders are starting to really uh, grasp this market again. And that's exactly what you want to look for. Uh, again, take on the way down 345, 342 is the next spot. Trade it right down to 342. Again, congratulations for you guys. But took that uh, Peloton. Again, this is uh, it, it went down about about 75 cents and then the news broke and 
they brought it right back up. And this is kind of the whole point, 364 line in the sand. If it builds below, it can flush. And they just sat there at 364 for like three hours defending that level. And this is, guys, again, it's so crucial to understand levels, okay? It's, it's vital, you know, it's vital to your longevity. Don't guess. There's numbers and technicals for a reason. Use those numbers, use those technicals, what they're telling you. Um, yeah, I got, look, today's tone is gonna set the tone for the rest of the week. You might find yourself doing more sitting than waiting. Uh, stay patient. We all know the importance of collecting data. Rewind last week, we were collecting data on Monday and Tuesday, contracting channels Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. They expanded, yada, yada, yada. Good things usually happen. So um, I believe that is it, right? Tesla, yeah, I mean, Tesla gave a little bit of a trade uh, towards the afternoon. Uh, 687 builds, you know, you know, there's about a $2 pop uh, in Tesla before it faded down. And I said, look, take on the way up. Wasn't supposed to be this massive trade. It was supposed to be cash flow, you know, cash flow push uh, only. And that is it. So that's it. You know, so look, we, we, we definitely want to believe that what we see on the surface is going to translate into tomorrow. But again, it's a very fluid situation, what's going on in Afghanistan. Obviously, we would like to see uh, the headlines get more muted than more um, exaggerated. Because again, the last, the last thing you wanna do is trade a news flash volatility market. It's very, very important that we have uh, organic moves one way or another. Guys, have a great night, have a great remainder of your week, and God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow.